The external oblique intercostal block was first described by Hamilton and Manicum in 2018, and they elaborated on it in another letter in which they reported results of injection in one cadaver, both superficial and deep, to the external oblique muscle at the level of the sixth intercostal space in the midclavicular line. They didn't describe the pattern of spread with the superficial injection, but they noted that there was staining of the lateral cutaneous nerve branches with the deep injection. At this point, I'd like to draw your attention to some important anatomical details in their figure. External oblique has been reflected off the ribs and intercostal muscles. Each intercostal nerve gives off a lateral cutaneous branch at the angle of the rib and this ascends through external oblique somewhere between the mid-axillary and the anterior axillary line. So when Hamilton and Manicam describe staining of the lateral cutaneous branches, they're referring to staining of these ascending nerve trunks, which is fairly posterior to where they were injecting, which was in the mid-clavicular line at the sixth intercostal space. Note, however, that they were aiming their needle in an oblique posterior to inferior direction rather than strictly cranial to caudal. In 2021, El Shakawi et al. reported a comprehensive description cadaveric study in small clinical series of the external oblique intercostal block, which I would recommend to you as essential reading. The technique as described by El Shakawi and similar to Hamilton's is to start by placing the probe in a parasagittal longitudinal orientation somewhere between the midclavicular line and anterior axillary line and at a transverse level corresponding to the sixth rib. A rough rule of thumb for this is to have the probe in line with the xiphoid process. The probe is then rotated into an oblique orientation so that it is perpendicular to the direction of the ribs, which brings the caudal end of the probe more lateral and closer to the anterior axillary line. This is an important detail as I'll explain later. Needle insertion is from cranial to caudal, aiming to place the tip into the plane that is deep to the external oblique muscle and superficial to the rib and intercostal muscles. Injection occurs over the 7 to 8 ribs, which is ideal for covering the territories of T7 and lower, especially given that spread tends to be greatest in the direction of injection. A catheter can also be inserted in this location. The cadaveric study by El Shakari et al. indicates that anterior intercostal nerves as well as lateral cutaneous branches are covered by injectate and thus potentially anesthetize. This would appear to be the major advantage of the external oblique intercostal block over a block like the M-Tapa in that it promises to cover both the anterior and lateral branches of the thoracoabdominal nerves and thus a wider territory that extends to the lateral aspect of the abdominal wall. As I discussed a little earlier with Hamilton's cadaveric study, this is likely because there is posterior spread of the injectate towards the mid-axillary line where the ascending trunk of the lateral cutaneous nerves are entering the plane that lies deep to external oblique muscle. What's a little harder to explain is how the dye injectate spills medially beyond the costal margin into the tap plane and even the rectus sheath and thus reaches the anterior branches of the intercostal nerves. Unfortunately, the paper doesn't provide any explanation on the anatomical pathway by which this could occur. However, if we look at these images from Netta's Atlas of Anatomy, we can see that the plane between the ribs and the overlying external oblique muscle may communicate cordially with the plane superficial to the transversus abdominis muscle. Spread into the rectus sheath, however, would still seem to be limited by the linear semilunaris. So this still remains to be fully elucidated. Despite this lack of clarity with regard to mechanisms of action, there are early favorable reports of clinical efficacy. El Shakari et al. reported clinical results in 22 patients and described detectable cutaneous sensory loss as far back as the posterior axillary line in all patients with coverage of the T6 to T9 or even T10 territories. The current clinical evidence as of October 2023 are all small case reports in series, including two recent papers reporting its use in open liver surgery and living donor nephrectomies. There was a positive impact on pain scores and opioid sparing in these case reports. There are as yet no systematic or randomized controlled studies on the external oblique intercostal block.